Hi guys, welcome to Productivity Guru. In today's video, we'll discuss about 1. Syncing Obsidian Vault between devices using Dropbox. 2. How to enable end-to-end -end encryption for data so no one but you can access it on your own devices. Thanks a lot for your feedback on my previous video. I realized it was pretty unstructured and I can only correct mistakes with your constant feedback. So please keep them coming. To make it more structured, I will take one topic at a time and create videos only focused on that topic. Feel free to skip the syncing section if you find it too basic. You can do that using the timestamps given in the description box below. Now, one of the things that I really love about Obsidian is that you are in complete control of your data. What that means is that all your data, which is nothing but plain text in Markdown format, is sitting on your local drive. This actually enables you to use any kind of sync, encryption or data processing service. Basically, unlike web services, you and only you are responsible for your data. You set the rules of how it's processed and how accessible it is. Before we start, I do want to point out that if you look at the Obsidian website or roadmap, you can see that Sync is a service that they plan on releasing in the near future. However, this video, especially the end-to-end -end encryption part, is something that can be useful for you anywhere using any service or app. Alright, let's get started by first looking at syncing our data between two computers. This is by far the easiest step. All you need to do is grab your vault, in our case we will take example vault that we had created in the previous video and drop it into our Dropbox. And that's it, you've enabled syncing. To access the vault, all you need to do is open Obsidian, select open folder as vault and access the vault from your Dropbox folder. Any changes you make to your vault will be auto saved and uploaded on Dropbox and all your machines will be up to date. Now, let's look at setting up encryption. First, let me explain what is end-to-end -end encryption and why is it necessary. End-to-end -end encryption is a method of secure communication that prevents third parties from accessing data while it's transferred from one end system or device to another. Now, let's look at our example vault above to better understand what this means. When we upload our files to Dropbox, we are really relying on Dropbox to protect our data. We have no real control or ability to know who is seeing our data or if any third party has access to it. When we set up end-to-end -end encryption, your files will be locked and transferred to Dropbox using a password. When you want to access this data using another device or machine, you need to decrypt this data by providing the same password, which you had set earlier. What this means is that data will be encrypted on one end and decrypted on the other, thus enabling end-to-end -end encryption. Now, by setting up end-to-end -end encryption, all our files and folders in our example vault will be stored on Dropbox in an encrypted manner. What this means is that if someone were to gain access to Dropbox and have a look at our data, they wouldn't be able to draw any conclusion about what our data is. For encryption, we'll be using Cryptometer. Cryptometer is a completely free encryption service that at least from the ones I've used is the easiest. You don't need to get into the nitty gritties of what ciphers and key lengths you need to use. It makes the entire process very intuitive Another great feature is that all files are encrypted individually. So if a file is changed, only the file that is changed has to be re-encrypted and synchronized and not the whole content, as with many other encryption tools. Cryptometer encrypts both files and file names with AES and 256-bit key length. This is what prevents anyone from drawing any conclusion about your data. If they were to look into your folder, all they would see is some gibberish which they won't be able to decipher. To download Cryptometer, all you need to do is visit their website. Click the Download Now option, then click Download. I have already downloaded it. However, if you're using a Mac, all you need to do is open the DMG and drag the application to your application folder. It is available for Windows and Linux as well. If you need to decrypt your data on your phone, then you will need to purchase the app from the App Store on iOS and Play Store on Android. Now let's open the app and set up Cryptometer for providing end-to-end -end encryption for our Obsidian Vault. One thing you need to note is that Cryptometer also uses a vault. This vault has no correlation to the Obsidian Vault. All right, let's proceed further. Now, as you can see, I already have a vault which is basically unlocked, but it's uh, encrypted. Let's create another one. You just have to click Add Vault, Create New Vault. Let's give the vault name example. Click Next. Now, I'll select Dropbox. Now, as you can see, it's going to be put on this uh, Dropbox slash example. I'll click next. Now, I'll just put in a password.
Now that the passwords match, um, it's going to ask you if you want to, if you want a backup recovery key, just in case you lose your password. Um, no, thanks. I will not lose my password, hopefully. And let's click create vault. And that's it. Vault is created. Now I'll just click unlock vault. And I again have to put in the password. And that's it. It unlocks the vault. And all I have to do is now click reveal vault. Now, one thing of interest is that the vault is, as you can see, it is not on Dropbox. This is on your hard drive, basically. This is a virtual drive that is mounted on your machine. Now, anything that you put here will automatically be encrypted and put on Dropbox. But if you would say to go into the Dropbox folder, let me open that for a second. So any, this is, uh, so now I've opened up the Dropbox folder. Anything that you were to put in the Dropbox folder, right? If I now say, for example, I drag a file and I put it over here. It'll, this will not be encrypted. This will be open and visible to everyone. Anyone who can view your Dropbox can view the file. To encrypt it, you'll need to put it here. Now, if you remember, we had created this example vault inside the Obsidian folder. All you need to do is drag this Obsidian vault and now push it into drag and drop it inside this example virtual drive basically as soon as you do that cryptometer will basically work in the back end and using its own secret magic formula it will encrypt your data and this is how the data will be viewable basically as you can see you can't make head or tail of it you can't understand what it is it's all gibberish and no one else will be able to understand it as well Now that we have a data encrypted, you might be wondering, how do I decrypt the data? For example, if you were to try and open this in another machine, what would you have to do to decrypt the data? It's very simple. You would have to click add vault. You would have to click open existing vault. Then you would have to, as it says, choose the master key dot cryptometer, which is here. So in example folder, I would go and I would choose this file from here. As soon as I click choose, you will be able to do that. As you can see, I'll just click open. If I click right now, I don't want to click open because it's already open. But if I click open, it will then ask me for a password. You put in the password that you had created above and that's all. That's all that's required to do this entire process. And your data is decrypted. That's all you need to do. Now that we have a wall decrypted, all we need to do is click open vault, then come to localhost, select example, Inside example, we have an example vault and just click open and that's it. Your encrypted vault is here. To ensure the security of your data, every time you're about to step away from your machine, remember to open Cryptometer and lock your vault so no one else can access it from your machine. I hope this video was helpful and I was able to present this in a more structured and thought out manner. Once again, please keep giving your feedback and thanks once again to those who have already done so. If you found this video helpful, then please like this video and subscribe to this channel. If you would like videos on any particular topic, then please comment below. I have a few videos planned from the feedback I've received so far. Thank you so much for watching.